six, we are tied at one win apiece with two showdowns remaining. As the man they call Tuba, Jean-Paulo de Souza, trained by Shogun Hua out of Universidade de Luta in Brazil, brings in a record of nine and three, three knockouts, six decision wins. He is still looking for his first submission victory, having himself been subbed three times as a professional. Having said that, Mike, I hear that this young man is a big prospect. There's, there's a lot riding on him. They say he's got a really good future ahead. Do you agree with that? You'd be right, Malcolm. The reason being that Tuba comes in on a four-fight winning streak dating back to July 2009 when he beat Eduardo Camaleo by decision in Sao Paulo. He also has wins over Alan Frost, Walter Lewis da Silva, Yuri Andrev in his last four fights, all by decision, however. So now we are looking for Tuba to be able to finish an opponent. That's right, so we're looking at a very good young prospect here, 27 years of age. And as Mike said, it's delicately balanced, one all between England and Brazil, this one, and of course, the big one coming up, the big, big fight. The Ninja versus Kong. And don't forget, folks, if you're following us tonight and you're watching online, then do join the talk on Twitter using the hashtag Bama6. As into the cage, steps Tuba. To Mike, here comes the man on which the English reputation depends, Valentino Petrescu. What do we know about him? A Romanian-born UK resident out of the Ministry of Martial Arts, a kickboxing stylist. He brings in a 10 and 2 record, six knockouts, three submissions. Comes in off a first-round TKO of Maxim Naldev in Essex in April and has gone three and two in his last five, eight and two in his last ten. Now, interestingly here, Malcolm, Valentino Petrescu was named by Sherdog earlier last year as number four in their top ten undefeated European exponents. That is, of course, not the case anymore. But a year ago, this man was touted as one of the next big things out of Europe and was undefeated. I know where you're going with this, Mike. This is a huge prospect for both men. It's an intriguing matchup because we've got a guy on the way up but he's finishing people, and we've got a guy on the way up that only seems to be able to finish people. It's an intriguing matchup. Petrescu can finish and he's fought some very credible names. His two best career wins as far as those names go include a decision win over Lithuanian kickboxer Aranus Andruszkiewicz and also a knockout of Polish submission specialist Premislav Misalia. And both these men having Muay Thai and kickboxing backgrounds, Malcolm, I expect it could be a stand-up, bang-it-out battle in the Bama Cage. It is indeed an intriguing prospect. And forget the England-Brazil element as well. There's careers riding on this fight because when it's a heavy burden to bear the thought of being a prospect, Mike. And just have a look at it here. Valentino Petrescu always means business. They call him Batista. And he is certainly built like the wrestler of the same name. Not as a heavyweight, of course, but of this weight division, a very well-sized fighter is Valentino Petrescu. This is what I've really been looking forward to, Malcolm, as finally Petrescu steps into the Bama game. Well, I agree with you, Mike, especially if we are treated to two Muay Thai stylists standing there and trading. I think this one will really get the crowd going. 10 and 2 versus 9 and 3, both men weighed in, 185 on the money, height advantage goes the way of the Romanian Petrescu, 6-1 versus 5-11, and you know we love it, style on style, Muay Thai versus Muay Thai. Let's go up to the golden voice of Pema Chantel to get us underway. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for our next contest of the evening. Three five-minute rounds of fighting in the middleweight division. Your referee for this contest is Mark Goddard.
Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, this man is a Muay Thai fighter with a professional record of nine wins, three losses, with three wins coming by TKO. He stands five feet 11 inches tall and weighed in at 186 pounds, fighting out of Curitiba, Brazil. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Joyem Paulo Tuba da Souza. His opponent fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a Thai boxing fighter with a professional record of 10 wins, two losses, with six wins coming by TKO. He stands six feet one inches tall and weighed in at 184 pounds, fighting out of Ben Fleet, England. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Valentino Batista Putres. Paul Daly ringside amongst the many loom here at Wembley Arena. It is an absolute honor to be here cage side for Bama 6 as the man they call Batista set to take on the man they call Tuba. England and Brazil one all at the moment here at Bama 6. We got two orthodoxes in center ring and Batista with the legs. Tuba with the outside thigh kick. And it started just how we hoped Mike. Explosive from both men. And again, exchanging heavy punches. And have you noticed how early they've planted the feet? They are launching the heavy artillery from the opening bell. You get the feeling, Malcolm, this one will not go the distance. Both looking to use the knees in the clinch. And you're right, Mike, the reason I think that is, look at those feet, it's there. This is heavy from the get go. There's no sounding out here. No kicks replied by heavy hands. It is Batista coming underneath with the legs. Tuba going over the top with the straight right hand. And again, that right hand. Smack between the eyes of Valentino Petrescu. The Romanian, such a very good fighting pedigree as a country. Of course, they produce many a K1 star, the likes of Daniel Gita and Kathleen Morishanu. And we are seeing some Daniel Gita-esque leg kicks here from Valentino Petrescu in the opening round. Well, look at the range, Mike. They're here straight away. There's, there's no... No waiting about, there's no being on your toes and moving in that thing. In range for the, oh, as I said that, straight away for the low kicks. It's, it's what we hoped for, let's put it that way. Petrescu is just tenderizing that lead thigh. Muay Thai clinch now from the Romanian. Knee to the bread basket, belly button through the back, and a short right hand to the jawline. Or was it the elbow, it's Melkin? A short elbow, Mike. He came in with a chopping elbow. And he set out his stall early with those Muay Thai tools. For both men again, when you see them come close, it's not for the shoot, it's for the clinch, so they can get their knees going. We are seeing a brutal kickboxing contest in a cage at the moment. Uppercut from Tuba. I'm amazed at how Valentino took that. That was a sweet, sweet uppercut, Mike, and he took it on the chin, literally. Tuba with the head tilted to one side, the way that the great Maurice Smith used to carry himself in the ring back in his days as the WKA champion. And that lead leg is right for the picking now. Well, Petrescu tested it, and for the first time, you saw a look at this look at this one, look at the way they're going at each other. Counter right hand from Tuba, couldn't get through the double forearms guard. I say Petrescu goes to that lead leg four more times, this fight could be over. He suddenly checks the inside thigh kick. That's the difference between the two men. Petrescu is checking the kicks. The Souza can't keep taking. He can't keep taking. Oh, the left hand! He tagged him with that one. The knees momentarily buckled on Tuba. Petrescu had a chance to go for the kill, but he backed off Malcolm. He may rue that decision. Well, he set him up beautifully with that leg kick. We're on about, but you're right. But at the moment, I think he's just going in confidence. You're right. He will rue it if he looks back and loses. But at the moment, those leg kicks, the Sousa's got to start checking or moving out of range. He's ignored them at his own peril, I'm telling you. Petrescu, the hands up nice and high, moving around the balls of his feet here, the Romanian. Jump balking right hand from Petrescu, didn't find the target. And look at the Sousa, throwing nothing at the moment. He's got to get on the offense. He can't not afford to sit here defensively against the man of the strength of Petrescu. He tries to counter the leg kick. And again, Petrescu, outside thigh, Caught him on the hamstring. You saw the oh, oh, oh. a huge sigh there from D'Souza, Mike. It's not enough sighing, he's got to do something defensively against it. If he gets to the end of the round, those kicks will become redundant if this keeps happening in rounds two or three. Look 
for a takedown here is the Brazilian. He is getting owned in the stand-up. Can he get Batista Petriscu on the ground? Short, popping left knee from D'Souza. I think that says everything about the way this first round's gone, that D'Souza is the one that finally goes for the shoot. You see the underhook off the left arm from Petrescu. He's corking up those knees nicely on the inside here. Won't do a lot of damage, but they will keep the score rate up for Valentino Petrescu with under a minute remaining. And a short body hook in there as well, Mike. And he is softening the Souza up here. And that lead leg will be all oh, big knee as well. Left hand is the target for D'Souza, now the space to move again for Petrescu. Will he go back to the legs? Will he pound that lead thigh? He's walking down D'Souza, goes to the back leg, switches it up nicely. Then he goes to the lead leg once more, uppercut is the target. But it's all Petrescu here, he checks the inside leg here. Body shot! The thing is, Mike, he's coming forward with impunity now. He knows he's got his man and he's coming forward and the Sousa is allowing him to do that. His one weapon for me is that uppercut that he throws sweetly on the inside. Liver kick to end the round. That was awesome. What domination, Malcolm, from Valentino Batista Petrescu. Let's get it straight, Mike. The problem for the Sousa now is Petrescu has no longer any respect for him. He's just walking forward throwing what he wants. In these early exchanges, D'Souza had a, a beautiful little uppercut, but from there onwards, Petrescu just walks through him. And that's the fear for D'Souza is Petrescu no longer has that respect that he had in that first minute. I'm just glancing up into the cage, the corner man who is fanning Petrescu wearing the Golden Glory shirt of four-time K1 champion Semi Schultz. And at this stage, it's Petrescu cracking the leg kicks like another Golden Glory fighter, Gokan Sagi. And what can Tuba do? He's got to check those kicks. He's got to get this fight to the ground, Malcolm. That's the only way I can see him handling Petrescu. Well, he, he tried the once in that first round and was stopped. I agree with you. There's been no leg checks whatsoever, and he's really paid for that because his own boxing slowed dramatically after he started taking those legs. It's one thing you can say to take it, but you don't realise what it does to your overall ability. And apart from that uppercut, the problem he's got now is Petrescu is happy to walk forward. And as you said that, this time the clinch was for an attempted shoot. And you see D'Souza immediately closing the gap. He doesn't want those leg kicks. And he is swinging for the jawline. It's two for D'Souza. Nice knee to the upper left rib cage from Petrescu. Good knee. And again, a, the round starts how the first ended, with, I think, D'Souza really loath to stand there and trade in the middle of the cage. That's the problem for him. He is being outgunned when it's upright. Petrescu controlling that left wrist. He'll try and open it up to throw the knees off the right, and he does. Two knees to quick succession to the outside left thigh that is already damaged by the leg kicks. It's constant work from Petrescu, and it's these niggling little things that will take their toll. And this is the worst thing for D'Souza. This is where he doesn't want to be, because he has no answers at the moment to the variety of Petrescu's work. Petrescu very loose on that lead leg. The sign of a true Muay Thai fighter. D'Souza checked the low kick off the back leg. First time in the fight, Mike, he's actually checked. Counter up a cup there, came close for Valentino Petrescu. Stiff jab from the Romanian. The problem for D'Souza is, apart from that sweet uppercut, his other punches are all hooks and they're too wide. If he's going to hook like that, at least come down to the body with the bigger target because his uppercut is sweet and controlled. The rest of his boxing isn't. That's where he needs to be. He's going to hook like that, bring it down to the body. Interestingly here, you see Petrescu starting to breathe through his mouth. His work rate is visibly slowed down. If there was a time for D'Souza to go aggressively at him, the time must be now. Well, finally, he's having success with the body. Those hooks are banging in to Petrescu's body. That won't help with his cardio either. For the first time, you're right, Mike, he looks vulnerable. I'd like to see D'Souza snap on the inside, drop the left hand down on the liver section and really test the body. He checks the low kick again, but that one hurt him. It was shin on shin. 
And D'Souza drew the short straw. That's right, it's been an absolute war of attrition so far, but for the first time, you see just a little bit of daylight for D'Souza. Nice inside lead kick from Petrescu onto that femoral profunda. The inside thigh kick so effective, it really does dead in the leg. And Petrescu, though, has really slowed down in attacking that lead leg. He fires a front kick off the rear. Now, for me, after these... Oh, there's a short uppercut from Petrescu. But after these combinations where the Sousa lands cleanly and hurts the body, if he's going to shoot, shoot then. You've worked your man. That's his best opportunity to get into the canvas. There's the big shot, big leg kick again from Petrescu. And now you see D'Souza blowing heavy out of his mouth. Well, my... Jab two from D'Souza. For me, this is when it gets exciting, when both men start tiring. That's when mistakes are made, that's when the shots start coming through. And both men are being hurt now. Shot to the hamstring there off the back leg from Petrescu. Then steps across to the outside rear thigh. Nice use of the leg kicks once more from Valentina Petrescu. Double forearms guard against the right front. He's too flat-footed, though, is D'Souza to effectively throw that right cross. He's got to talk through it. Well, that's the tiredness as well coming into play, Mike. Come that... to the eye, perhaps, here. Yeah. I think that's what he's saying. I think that's what he's saying. There's a little nick on the corner of the eye as well, but nothing to worry about. And they go again. Inside leg kick, Petrescu a little late on the check on that occasion. Slams the back leg. I'm surprised, Malkin, that D'Souza hasn't switched stance as well to protect that lead thigh. Well, he is having success with the right hand, which is why he may be staying there. But I do feel that as the round's gone on, he's had more of a share of it. What I thought would be more of the same in the second has proved to be far more even because for everything else, Petrescu has not been able to finish him. A round like this will do wonders for the confidence of D'Souza. Uppercut from Petrescu, didn't time it at all. D'Souza snaps the chan, threads it like a needle through the double forearms, nicely done. Chan 2 falls short and now you see Valentino Petrescu is a little flat-footed. He tries to shake himself off and a beautiful kick to the liver section. Oh, we, we heard that one, that was beautiful. But have you noticed, Petrescu's boxing isn't as sharp anymore, and for the first time, D'Souza is checking the <laughs> But a great round, though, Mike. I tell you what, Malcolm, we may have written Tuba off after the first round, but he is back in it in a big way now. It is still anyone's fight. I agree, Mike. He came back strongly there, and for the first time, he was given openings. And for the first time in the fight, I think it was key the fact that he switched to the body. He had success to the body, he started checking the kicks, and suddenly Petrescu's work wasn't as crisp as it was earlier. I think Petrescu should have stayed with the game plan and peppered and peppered and peppered the legs. We are deadlocked at one win apiece in the UK versus Brazil thus far here at Bama 6. And look at that final kick of the round, beautifully chambered by Valentino Petrescu. You see there D'Souza trying to counter off the leg kick with a straight right hand. He just hasn't got the timing down pat yet, but there's still five minutes remaining. And he's quick to emerge from his corner with some last minute instructions from Shogun Hua and the team. Now it'll be interesting. Will Petrescu go back to that lead fight? Well, the thing that excites me is they're both tired now, Mike. And that's when the mistakes happen. That's when the big punches land. Muay Thai clinch, Petrescu try and go for the meet and greet. Did it work for him? Good front kick for the midsection. Petrescu backing up here. D'Souza's going to look for the right hand in a moment. Well, for me, that's another key to this fight for the first time. D'Souza is now confident enough to come in and stalk and come forward. Whereas before you felt that Petrescu walked through him with impunity, now he's run that respect back. There's the right hand and the uppercut from Tuba de Souza. Uppercut from Petrescu to a wild left hand from the Brazilian. Petrescu is still too flat footed. Will not connect cleanly with those punches, Malcolm. But Mike, there's something very important here. 
D'Souza has landed very cleanly with that uppercut. And then you look at the fact that there's the lack of stoppages. Does he lack, do you feel, real stopping power, which I think is being shown here? What I'm really disappointed in is that the prime weapon that almost had D'Souza going down the first round has been seemingly left out now. Where are the leg kicks from Valentino Petrescu? And he must have heard me again. But he should just still be chomping that left leg over and over and over again. I agree with you, Mike. I, I firmly believe it was a winning formula. And you realise... There we go. What a great kick. But for the first time, why is D'Souza coming forward? Because those leg kicks aren't coming. A sloppy right hand there from Petrescu. D'Souza almost capitalised with the counter. Three minutes 20 remaining in the third and final round. Inside leg kick from Petrescu. I but might be proven wrong here, Mike, but I'm going out on a limb. You know when fighters reach a certain level where you know there won't be a stoppage, they've sucked it up, they've both given their best. I feel now that neither man can stop this. Neither man will win this by stoppage. And who would have thought it in the first round? The way they were throwing down, like I said, you got the feeling it wasn't going to go the distance. High left round kick! And look at D'Souza, he wears it and rallies back. It's just a fight of guts now. It's just a fight of intestinal fortitude. But still, Petrescu is backing up. Well, this is where D'Souza, like, though, Malcolm, needs to capitalise now. You're right, it's because Petrescu has stopped his best weapons. He's boxing with D'Souza now. He's been lured into a boxing match. I feel that if one man can just spring forward and unleash an assault at the jawline, they may have some luck. Will it be two minutes as a left hook followed by a short right hand? We saw earlier the one key there. Suddenly, Petrescu brought that high kick up. One of those as well. The Susan rocked just slightly. One more disguise, a couple of low kicks, then bring it up high. That could be it because there again. That's what I'm saying. Because without that, I think they're just going to punch themselves out. I don't see the man putting the other way with these punches now. It's a good call, Malcolm. Fake with the outside leg kick. Get to Susan and drop his attention downstairs and then switch up off the lead leg and throw a round kick behind the back of the net. Nice outside leg kick from D'Souza. Maybe the best kick of the fight so far from the Brazilian. How fortunes change, Mike. It's now D'Souza doing the leg kicks, taking centre of the cage. The pendulum has swung here in this battle. It was all Petrescu in the first. D'Souza rolling back in the second. And the third round, wherever you're watching, folks, how are you scoring it? Nice stiff jab there from the Brazilian. I think if we look at it, Mike, this third round, with one minute, one minute just about to go, is key for both men. Someone, if they go for broke now, at least for the points victory, it's got to be now because this third round's on a knife edge. I agree, Melgan. Whoever puts in the work for the next 60 seconds should take this one. Wow, the hooking punch off the lead hand from De Souza. That's a tired, tired punch. And still, Petrescu backing up here. The Romanian has not been on the offensive at all. Jab to it, he gets counted. Out of the way, the looping left from D'Souza. The frustrating thing for me with regards to Petrescu, that leg is still there, he's still got it nice and open for him. He's not protecting it, it's there now if he wants to throw it, and he hasn't. He suddenly stops, what, three quarters of the way through the, the second round. And he's suddenly switched up to all uh, self-ball stance momentarily here. This is interesting. I wonder if indeed Petrescu has actually hurt his left foot, and maybe that's the reason he's not throwing it at all. Well, as I said, Mike, I didn't think they had the power left to stop. They're going for it now. It's all too late. But it has been a brutal, brutal encounter. Fantastic punch! Who will go ahead? The Sousa pops the fist into the air. So do does Petrescu. It's going down to the judges. Malcolm, how do you see it? I think we both agreed. Very clear Petrescu first round. I could even possibly go for most of the second round with him. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Petrescu just. I agree with you. I think Petrescu should slightly edge this one. And it was a close contest nonetheless. <laughs> Some marking on the face of Valentino Petrescu. Courtesy of the hands in the final round there. From Tuba to Souza. The deadlock. Will it indeed be broken?
We are one all between the UK and Brazil at the moment here at Banasex. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this contest by majority decision, out of the blue corner, Valentino Batista Patrescu.